right. Does anybody know what microblading is or the theory of microblading? Or? I want to read it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go by what, micro, what we perceive what microblading is. So microblading is also known as 3D brows, eyebrow embroidery. It's a form of permanent makeup. We use a manual tool to create simulated hair strokes with pigment to the upper dermis layer of the skin in the eyebrow region. So microblading is considered semi-permanent and results can last up to 12 months depending on the skin, lifestyle, and age. Okay, so also in this class, you're gonna learn micro shading. So micro shading is a technique that's done by using an electric hand tool or manual tool, which creates a soft powder effect that resembles eyebrow powder. So instead of the hair show technique with microbladed, shading employs a stippling method, which um, use repetitive dots into the skin, okay? All right. <clears throat> So there are certain tools that we use for microblading. You guys know this as the manual blade. So they can come as disposables, or they can come as needles and pens. So we're gonna show you the disposable, which is in your kit, so it looks like this. They come in a U-blade or a slope, okay? We use a slope in this class. The U-blade is more of an advanced technique, but you also have the U-blade in your kit. So what we use here, and what we always use here in the beginning is the 12 slope blade. Um, it has 12 needles on the slope. <laughs> so when you think of 12 needles going into the skin, that's where the pain comes from. So when people say microblading hurts, it's because 12 needles is dragging along the skin. But we also use products to alleviate the pain as well. You can't take the pain away 100% but you can minimize it. Okay. Just pause for one sec. I'm just going to this camera over here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so you guys have any questions about the actual micro bleed or the disposable blade? None? You sure? All right. Uh, I do have a question about sure. the, the slides, though. Will we have the information printed out? Yes, I'll send it to you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're going to move on to who is not a candidate for microblading. You cannot be pregnant or breastfeeding. You can't be on Retin-A or Accutane. You can't be undergoing chemotherapy, skin with an open wound present, bacterial or viral infections, keloid-prone skin, and skin that is very thin or shallow, you want to kind of shy away from that. You will have some elderly clients that come in. You want to switch them over to the micro shading or the shading technique because if you do the micro blading and you're slicing into the brows and they have wrinkled skin, when it comes to when you pull it apart to slice the brows to create the hair shows and then it comes together, it creates wrinkles. Okay. So, you know, you want to keep that in mind to switch, I would say clients probably over 65 yeah. to a powder brow technique or to the manual shading technique in which you guys will learn. Okay. Any questions regarding that? Sure, going once, going <laughs> twice, no. <laughs> All right. All right. So we already went over the microblading tools, but I'm going to show you the tray so that you guys will know how to set this up. So we'll go over it constantly throughout this three-day course. So you have your manual pins, you have your disposable pins, you have your slope blade, your rulers, your calipers, your stencils, your pigment cups, pigment rings, your pencil to draw, your mascara wands, Q-tips, wood sticks, and pigments. So another part of the procedure is you're going to need your PPE. That's your personal protection equipment that consists of your head wraps. So you get one and your client gets one. Shoe covers, we wear shoe covers here to protect our shoes. We use face masks on every client, every procedure, no matter what, use your face mask. Especially today, use your face mask. Okay. And you have your gloves. We use nitro gloves just in case someone is latex allergy, you have nitrile, so you don't have to worry about it. And then we also have our gowns, so this will protect you from any spills, okay? Also, 
We keep our Q-tips, our mascara wands, and our wood sticks in a sterilized pouch because we don't want sand, any kind of debris getting on it. So we keep this sealed up, okay? Then we have our disposable blade that we use. We have our eyebrow ruler for our mapping. We have our alcohol swabs to clean the brows before you get started with the mapping. We have our cotton rolls that we use to wipe off any pigments. And we have our tinkle razor to shape the brows. These are one time use, dispose it as soon as you use it once. All right, so after that, we get to the mapping. So do you guys have any questions regarding the tools that we use? You guys are going to be able to take a picture of the tray, set up the tray. You guys will have your own PPE for each of your clients on Sunday. Did everybody do the blood form packaging, the safety and sanitation, or we looked at it or got started with it? Okay, so we don't go over that part because you have to get certified in that part. But you guys have the biohazard containers in front of you, which you should dispose of all your needles, all your tinkle razors and all your disposable blades should go into the biohazard containers. Um, do not put it in the trash can. Just put it in the container. All right, so now we're gonna go over the client consultation procedure and Siobhan's gonna teach that part. <coughs> okay. We're gonna move on to the next. Okay. Um, let's see if I can just, yeah, just want to mic her up. Yeah. No questions? Fast pace? <laughs> I'm sure how many of you guys have taken you to this? Okay. Instagram? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Facebookers? No? Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll be waiting for her to get mic'd up. Yeah, I'll we'll go up here, starting to develop your name and how you became a part of this class. Uh, my name is Spade. Okay. Um, I love everything about makeup, hair, everything facial. And I got my eyebrows microblading. Mm -hmm. I got them tattooed like 15 years ago and they look really bad. So I <laughs> look into the microblading mm -hmm. stuff and, and I really like it. I heard about this class from my friend around this area. Okay. And I really want to do this <coughs> Okay, well, thank you for coming. My name is Brianna, and I've always been interested in the beauty community, but I didn't want to be a makeup artist or a hair artist. And whenever my baby came around, I couldn't afford it at the time. So, And also, the classes were, I think, like in Virginia at the time. Mm -hmm. So then, I'm April. Um, I was in touch with a case manager of mine. I love makeup, and so I went to see her, and she had hers done. I was admiring how beautiful they were. Um, and she basically highlighted the money that you can make in the industry, and she wanted me to do it. So she was like, well, I'm going to help you. And I was like, well, I'll find a place, and I found where I was going to be so Welcome. Hi, I'm Dina. Um, I had breast cancer, and I've always had full brows. So after that, brows were gone. And so I started like checking around and doing some research and stuff. And I had a lot of people that I met during chemo mm -hmm. had the same problem. Brows don't come back. So I figured I could try this and try to help some people because I know how I felt. Well, thank you and welcome, and we love that story. All right. My name is Meredith. Um, I'm an esthetician of about six years now, and I'm also an eyelash extension uh, stylist, or whatever you want to call me. I've um, been doing that for over a year now, and I've always loved microblading. I love brows, and been just trying to keep my eye out for the best kind of class, and I really liked the vibe of your guys' class, and so I'm super excited to be here. Well, thank you. Welcome. Hi, my name is Shelby. I've been doing hair about 10 years now, 
and I'm looking just to grow and become better at everything that I do. And I've had my, um, my eyebrows manipulated twice, probably five years ago and then three years ago. And I had like absolutely none. I'm very fair. I'll buy, I will go buy no without makeup on. So um, it's it's really brought a lot of like happiness to have you know brows and so I'm really excited. All right. Well, thanks for coming. I'm sure you'll enjoy the class. All right, lady. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Sheree. Um, I basically wanted to take this class because I took a lash extension class not too long ago. And I work in the IT field, but I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I wanted, I always had, um, you know, a thing with, like, on the beauty side. So mm -hmm. I wanted to take the lashes and the microblading. I got a lot of good reviews from you guys. So I thought this was the best place to start. Yeah, well, yes. welcome. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And all you have to do is we give you the roadmap. Just follow it and go and get started. Don't sit on it. Don't wait. Just go get started. No matter where you are in your life, just get started. If you're at home in the basement, just get started. Start before you're ready. That's yes. great advice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we'll let Siobhan continue with the consultation process. All right. So consultation, which is probably the one of the most important parts of offering this procedure. This is where um, you get to talk to your client, you get to get feedback from them as to what they expect, and you get to tell them what they really should expect. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this is where um, you'll have them fill out a form um, to get all of their medical history. Um, you'll go over aftercare instructions before. Um, you'll go over um, eyebrow shape. You do an eyebrow shape, you'll do a color swatch, and you let them see both so they get an idea of what their brows are going to look like before you actually start your procedure. Um, so during that consultation, they can say, yes, I like this shape. No, I don't. You kind of guide them through it because you're going to do a brow mapping that's according to the structure of their face. So you want to kind of make sure they stay in a realistic, um, um, in a realistic as far as how they want their brows to go. Um, you'll go over the pigment and then the hair strokes. All of your clients may not be a candidate for microblading, so you'll let them know that as well. Um, some may be a candidate for micro shading. It just depends on your skin, and that's something you'll learn as well. Um, you'll go over your consult, consult and discuss any conditions that your client may have either past or present and at the time you should go over medical and release forms. So if you guys turn the module one and yeah. look at all of yeah. that and your kind of consultation forms is located in your and bag. In your bag. So you can and so these are the forms. They're right in everyone's bag and you have them fill this out completely to get as much information as you possibly can get mm -hmm. to make sure that this procedure goes smoothly as possible. You guys do get the form, so we send you a Google Drive link so you can put your logo or your name on it and just print off the forms as well, so, and as well as the after here. Right. And so once the form is filled out, that's when you go to the next step, which is the eyebrow shaping. That's when you map out their brows, uh, and then you make sure that they are pleased with the shape, the arch dimension, thickness, and the length of the brow. During the procedure, it's important to stay light and conservative. You don't want to, some people, some of your clients may want bold brows. You really want to try to scale it back as much as possible and keep it conservative. And then once they go through the whole process, the healing process, that's when they come back and you could, you know, take it up a notch. And they say, hey, I want my brows bold or darker. That's when you make changes during the touch-up appointment. Um desires versus needs your client may want a specific color or look but it's your responsibility to guide them in the right direction for the best look you have to remember that you are a professional and that you make the ultimate decision to combine between the ultimate desires and your skills so what that means is if someone come in and they don't have no brows and they never have permanent makeup and they say, I want my brows like Kim Kardashian. Yeah. No. The answer is no. Right. <laughs> Let's start with Chris Kardashian, right. Chris Jennifer, and then we can, like and a, then we can yeah. like move on up to the no, Kim. Yeah. And even if they have like 
their color is dyed, their hair is colored, you know, dyed a certain color, you can't match with their hair. Like, that's just, I've had clients who want it. Oh, I have my hair red, and uh, no, you cannot do that. Red hair, you have red to do, red. Right, you have to do according to their skin. So, um, and then once you do that, you go over the healing process as well in between that time. So you can let them know that um, it's done in two sessions, the initial procedure and the touch-up procedure. But there might be a need for a third session at times. It just depends. Everybody is different. Some people will not need a, a third session. Um, a third touch up uh, they will be able to let you know like hey it didn't take I need another touch up and then you take it from there um, it is important that the client knows that there is a healing process involved and you need to inform them of that the quality of the outcome depends on the correct treatment during recovery time um, microblading is a bunch of little incisions in the skin that may cause swelling redness uh, swelling, redness, itchy, itchiness, irritation, and infection in a case that they don't heal properly. After a proper procedure, it is normal for the skin to be red and swollen depending on the skin sensitivity. Uh, it could be anywhere from mild to severe swelling. In the first days, the eyebrows will look much darker because the body is rejecting the pigment and it will take approximately 10 to 12 days to fully scab over. It is important to guide the client to treat the area as a wound and should not pick or irritate the scabs. This can cause scarring and loss of color pigment. The client should avoid excessive exposure to the sun and avoid extra hot environments such as sauna, sports activities, etc. Uh, once the scabbing has stopped, it will look as if there was a loss in pigment. This is completely normal depending on how the client took care of the area during healing. The loss of color pigment can be anywhere from 20 to 70%. This is due to the fact that after 10 days of our skin forms a protective barrier which makes the pigment look lighter and blurry. This is normal. The pigment takes approximately four weeks to appear again. It is important that the clients are aware of the healing process because they will call you and freak out. <laughs> they will call you and freak out, yes. You'll have pictures on your yes. phone, so you <laughs> text like messages, DMs, <laughs> all of it. They will call you. I tell my clients at least twice, two to three times during the whole procedure what the aftercare will be like, what the healing process will be like, and they still call me. And be like, I know you said that, <laughs> yeah. but they're nervous, and that's to be expected. So you have to just be very calm and, you know, be very understanding and just walk them through the procedure, the healing process again. Like, remember, and you usually give them a form or a piece of paper to take home with them so they know what to expect. And you just say, remember, we explained, you know, we talked about the healing process, and this is normal. And then within four weeks, this is when everything will be settled, and you will know what your brows look like. And then that's when you could come back for your touch-up appointment. So make sure you call them back. If you yes. cannot call them back immediately, just send them a message yes. that you will be giving them a call back in yep. 24, 48 hours or a couple of hours. If they do not hear from you. They will freak out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they will possibly go and leave a bad review Absolutely. because they did not hear from you. So, just from my experience, if you cannot get back to them immediately, just send them a message that hey, I, I got your picture, I got your message. I'll be calling you back at the end of the day or before Absolutely. the close of business. So, just make sure yes. that you acknowledge that they sent you a message or they called. That's one of the most important parts of the customer service. And they will ding you on it. Yeah, absolutely. They're waiting to ding you anyway. Yes. So you definitely want to make sure that you kind of solve their issue before right. they get out of here. Absolutely. Sometimes I try to, as much as I possibly can with a busy schedule, reach out to them in like a week or so. If I can, like, hey, you know, especially if I can tell that the client is kind of, you know, nervous and uneasy. If I can remember and have the time, I'll shoot them a text, like, just checking up on you to see how your brows heal. And then, you know, that'll kind of, like, relieve them to, like, oh, okay, you know, like, she's there for me. She understands and that I can, you know, contact her if I need her. So that's something to try to do, uh, you know, if you can, if your schedule allows you to. 
Then we have the before care. Yes. So the before care is um, do not have a tan or sunburned face. Do not take um, medications such as aspirin, niacin, vitamin E, or ibuprofen 24 hours before procedure. No alcohol or caffeine on the day of the procedure. Please note that you will be more sensitive during your menstrual cycle. No blood thinners three days prior to the procedure. This is what you will let your clients know in advance when they book their appointment. Um, now, if you have appointments on Friday and Saturday, people, they will be drinking alcohol. Absolutely. So and they still drink coffee. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what you and tell them. Yeah. 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 Everything but you told what them it does to do. is it increases the blood flow. So yes. when you notice that it's more than pinpoint bleeding in the brow, sometimes you will see blood like dripping down and you won't be able to see your work, you know, you kind of got to ask them, you know, what did you do? Did you drink last? They, they don't want to say no. Right, right. <laughs> but if you cannot see your work, you know, after you dab it a couple of times with numbing or with a Q-tip, then you probably would like them to come back and reschedule because, you know, what good is their brows if you can't see it? Right. You can't see your work. So right. you just kind of like blind eye in the procedure. Right. So Absolutely. just make sure that they are following those before care before instructions care. Um, so that you won't be putting this. I mean, we've had like people drink beer and beer oh, yeah. before and beer yeah. after or and beer blood. Fresh and, on the breath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just make sure like you go over. I mean, you know, it's going to take you a good three to five years to blind out a procedure. But when you're brand new, you really can't see it. Don't, right. don't even risk it. Don't even risk the bad reputation. It's not worth it. So just let them know that they should reschedule. And if they don't want to reschedule, it's just their loss. Right. Absolutely. And so um, once you finish your procedure, you want to give them aftercare instructions. Everybody, aftercare <laughs> instructions is different. But at Browsing Company, um, it's a dry heel. Um, if needed, you apply witch hazel three to four times a day. So, so we do a dry heel um, because if you apply any ointments or any creams, you could possibly get an infection. We have not had a problem out of scalpel pigments at all in the whole three years but that yeah. we've been using it. So. Mm -hmm. If a client gets an infection, you have to kind of, and they did it, and they were supposed to do a dry heel, you have to kind of like pull it out of them. What did you do? Did you wash it? Did you put makeup on top of it? Right. Because nine times out of ten is something that they put on their brows. Because if you did a dry heel, nothing should happen. And witch hazel is not going to give you an infection. Right. So, um... So yeah, so you apply the witch hazel as needed for oily skin. Apply one time a day for three times. Um, do not rub or pick or scratch at the treated area. Let any scabbing or dry skin naturally exfoliate off. Picking can cause irritation and possible infection. Also loss of pigment. I just had a client who admitted, which I was grateful for, that she picked one brow. One brow was yeah. amazing. And then the other brow, I'm like, what happened? She was like, I'm going to be honest. I picked it. It was like the last scab left. And I just pulled it off. And it took the pigment off. Mm -hmm. It took the pigment off. So you have to, you know, stress the importance of not touching them while they're healing, while they're scabbing. Um, you also want to let them know to avoid uh, direct sun exposure or tanning for three to four weeks after procedure. Avoid heavy sweating for the first seven days after procedure. No facials, Botox, chemicals, treatments, and microdermabrasion for four weeks. 